We're going to start off the afternoon with uh, some Vikings talk and some Vikings draft talk. And want to know, and phone lines open to you, 651-646-8255, or tweet us at SKOR North. How has your perception of the Vikings and this offseason changed after the draft this weekend? 651-646-8255, or tweet us at SKOR North. And what I mean by that, Collar, is we've been trying to figure out all offseason what exactly the the course for this team is because some of the moves that they make like re-signing Kirk Cousins like keeping Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman around those are win now moves but letting five starters walk or just released from defense and letting Josh Klein go and especially trading Stephon Diggs those are not win now moves and when you're trading Stephon Diggs for draft picks that especially is not a win now move and I don't know that the draft necessarily cleared anything up for me Collar I was saying heading into the draft that if they traded for a Joe Thune or a Trent Williams, veteran players who can come in and make an impact now, that goes along with the win now plan, but they did not do that. They only added more draft picks and more youth to this roster. That, again, screams to me that they're building for the future. What I, The conclusion I've come to, and we sort of came to this conclusion together last week, I think on this show at this time, and I don't know if this was something you discussed before that or if we sort of stumbled into it together, but it appears that there are two plans. The win now plan, which that hinges on Mike Zimmer coaching him up and getting the most out of guys, especially on the defensive side of the football. And if if plan A doesn't work, then plan B is, well, we we've, we've well stocked ourselves for the future and whoever the next head coach and maybe next GM of the Minnesota Vikings is. Nothing about what I saw this weekend in the draft moves me off that position that I think that's that's what the Vikings are thinking. Win now if Mike Zimmer can do a great job and win later with a different coach if he can. You know, I, I did have the thought, though, that when we talked about Zimmer and Spielman even before the draft, and I, I think I said, you know, I, they are tied at the hip and it would surprise me if there was anything different. I think after this draft, though, uh, as well as the Minnesota Vikings did. And I'm sure ownership has seen all of the draft grades and they're deserved. I, I think sure. Um, if you're giving them anything less than an A, it's probably a B plus, And the only nitpick that you might have is just that they didn't get more developmental you should, guards in the late rounds. But you that's should be about as it. happy with your football team after a draft as you can be yeah. about a football team after a draft. <laughs> yeah. But that's, yeah. but that's tempered by the notion that a, the draft is completely random. Yeah. And even the best drafts turn out not to look so good three or four years down the road. And and B, don't expect real major immediate impact from the draft class, even if it is a very good right. one, because rookies in the NFL very rarely do make major immediate impact. So be happy about it. I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade or dampen any enthusiasm, but be as happy about it as you should be about any draft. Right. Yeah. I mean, any draft can go right. Any draft can go wrong. I'm sure if we go back and look at 2016 draft grades for the Vikings, there are probably some that say, hey, they did a great job. And it turned out to be a tremendously bad draft for them. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure, too, that 2015, there were people who were not raving over that draft and said, oh, well, maybe it's pretty average. And it turns out to be the best draft that anybody had in 2015, where they brought in Stefan Diggs, Eric Hendricks, Daniel Hunter and Trey Waynes. Um, but what I would say, though, is that I think that if you were putting odds on who's here in the future now after the draft and to some extent free agency and getting a deal done with Kirk Cousins and then possibly signing Anthony Harris to a contract extension, we'll see if that happens. And we'll also see how they deal with the Delvin Cook potential contract extension, which I think is likely coming at some point here then sometimes they don't come until right before training camp or even into training camp with contract extension so it could be at any time that they sign Delvin Cook to an extension but you know I, I think the odds are now better that Rick Spielman is here long term than they are Mike Zimmer that Mike Zimmer is going to have a lot of pressure on him next season to win and to have a good team and be in the playoffs but I think the way that Spielman with this draft has quickly sort of restocked the cupboard with players who could make them a very relevant and good team in 2021 and took the exact right logical approach of getting the right positions with the right types of players, guys who could contribute right away, but especially have 
high ceilings of being very good players down the road, specifically getting Ezra Cleveland was a great job. Someone who could be their long-term left tackle and investing on that offensive line now with a second round right tackle, a first round guard and a second round left tackle. They've started to do that after years of kind of putting it on the back burner and trying to sign guys. Um, you could make an argument that they are set up to be a very good team in 2021, especially where the you know rest of the NFC North is kind of a cluster that might look good to the ownership. And if they go seven and nine, if they go six and 10 and it's a miserable year for Mike Zimmer and he, he could just walk too at, at the end of this because he doesn't have a contract extension at this moment. And if he does sign a contract extension, they could decide, you know what? We're going to take what we have here, a very, very good roster, hand it over to a new coach. But since we still have a very good roster, we're going to keep the front office that has put that roster in place. Yeah, I wasn't sure when we talked about the the two plans of win now and keep Mike Zimmer or fire Mike Zimmer if you don't win now and, and win later with, as you just laid out, a very well-stocked cupboard after the 2020 draft. I wasn't really sure where that left Rick Spielman. I wasn't sure if they were attached at the hip, as you were saying, or if he and Mike had sort of been been split in this plan and maybe we keep Rick and maybe we don't. But you're saying that you think that this draft might have given Rick Spielman a little bit more job security beyond 2020, whereas Mike Zimmer still in the same boat he was on Friday. Yeah, I think if uh, Rick Spielman walks out of this draft with no cornerback, say, uh, no answer. I mean, it would have that been, would be, dude, it, it, but the city we've would be seen on it. fire right I know, now, but we've seen stuff people like would this. break social distancing practice yeah, yeah. to go out and riot if there wasn't a cornerback selected. I mean, there are teams that had the most illogical drafts you could possibly have. And the, the Packers are the ones that come right to mind, but even the bears drafting another tight end. Like, are you serious bears? Um, so, you know, there are times where you have a draft that comes out and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense right after and maybe it doesn't work out at all and that's where you would say this is how we're going to evaluate it you know we're going to evaluate someone's draft by how much sense it made and what you needed filled what positions were likely going to be open down uh, down the line did you get players who could develop and then that sort of thing and did you get some late round fines with all the scouts that we pay you know, this much money to go find those late round guys that end up turning out. And the Vikings overall have found guys like that. I mean, last year, even alone, getting BC Johnson from the Colorado State Rams, is a pretty good find for somebody that maybe during his career gets 40 to 50 catches a year. But that's a hell of a lot better than what you expect usually from uh, the seventh round. So the Vikings front office has consistently done a good job of building very competitive rosters during the Mike Zimmer era. And if they come up short. What we know about Mike Zimmer is that the seasons where things have gone wrong, they've gone really wrong. And there's been a lot of tension, uh, even though they haven't lost a, a ton of games. Their worst seasons are seven and eight wins during Mike Zimmer. But in 2016 and in 2018, there was a lot of tension that they came out of the season with. It wasn't just everyone shook the, you know, shrugged their shoulders and went, well, you know, we had an injury that year and didn't go our way. It was, you know, Mike Zimmer burning some bridges with some people, firing offensive coordinators. Like it, it always ends up being a lot of drama, having cornerbacks going rogue on the head coach in 2016. And uh, I don't know that he could survive another one of those types of seasons. Now where it gets difficult is if you go nine and seven and you lose in the first round of the playoffs, like, do you want to make a change and say, Hey, maybe we should go all in with an offensive coach and see how that works out. Or do you want to stick with it long-term um, but I feel after this draft, much closer to this could be the end of the Zimmer era where it's just a coach who has done a really good job here, but you sort of get to the end of the line and, and want to move on. Um, almost like an Andy Reid in Philadelphia. You know, you had your runs and, and he's a great coach, but uh, let's try something else. Um, but with the front office, their ability to restock the cupboard so quickly here with a very good draft might have kept them in place going forward, even if they do only have uh, an eight and eight type of season. You mentioned Zim burning bridges. Do you do you see a scenario where Mike Zimmer comes out this year? They have a, a successful season, whatever, however you want to measure that in the in the Vikings front office. Let's just say they win ten games, they win two playoff games, and are eliminated. Let's just let's just go down that course. And the Vikings are happy with his performance. They're like, great job, Mike. We want to bring you back. And he's like, you know what? Screw you guys. You didn't believe in me when the season started. I'll take my services elsewhere. Is he that type of dude who who would would spite the Vikings because they didn't show 
the trust and belief in him to give him a contract extension going into the season? Yes, he is 100% really? that type of person. Yes, definitely. Uh, I could totally see that happening. Um, I had heard that Zimmer, if he had gotten traded to the Dallas Cowboys, would have been fine with it. That, um, you know, he's done a lot here. And even his comment to Deion Sanders about how, you know, we've won the division a couple of times and we've gotten the playoffs consistently and people still don't give me enough credit, that kind of thing. He may, I forget exactly what his comment was uh, verbatim, but it was something like that. Like they're still talking about firing me, even though I've won all these games. That's what he said after they, they beat the Saints. And, you know, I think it's a little bit of a window into how embattled at times Zimmer has been throughout his time in Minnesota. I mean, it's been very dramatic since he's been here from the Teddy Bridgewater injury to Sam Bradford to an NFC championship where you get blown out to, you know, the, the Minneapolis miracle and all, and all, all the things that have happened in last year with the saints. I mean, talk about the emotional swings again of you beat the saints in incredible fashion, but then you go out to San Francisco and you get your faces beaten in and, and things like that. I mean, that's kind of been like the Zimmer era has been an extreme roller coaster of relevant football they've been in the conversation as a super bowl team in the nfc every year since his first year like 2014 they weren't but every year since then and uh, that's not easy to do as a head coach but he also i guess the, the way that i would put it is almost in like stefan diggs fashion there's a lot of similarities between those two they burn hot like they're uh on the emotional side and zimmer can be um, ornery and aggressive sometimes and not always the best when it comes to handling different personalities and situations, you know, he hires the wrong offensive coordinator then fires him with a couple of games left to go in the regular season. And, you know, I mean, things like that and the way that he's handled some players and the way that he's handled through the media and, and things like that. Um, and other people within the front office, I wrote a, a story coming out of the combine because I had a bunch of people tell me, that, you know, there is this pretty big gap between the way the head coach views analytics and the way that the front office views analytics. So, you I know, mean, Mike Zimmer has been pretty open and honest about that. He hasn't hid that. He doesn't really give a damn about the analytics. Right. And, you know, it's funny is a lot of his theories and a lot of the ways he handles things like fourth downs, for example, match up with the analytics. But if you're the ownership, you feel like. Like I read a story that the uh, White House chef sometimes mixes cauliflower into the mashed potatoes, <laughs> so the president eats a little healthier. Don't you think that the Vikings just they just package analytics in a in a way that Mike Zimmer will accept it and digest it? They put analytics in his mashed potatoes, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think that's what's yeah. going on with the Vikings? And I and I think that uh, some of it's just an old school football guy act where he's like, you know, don't tell me how to football, and then he knows more about the stats <laughs> than he than he lets on. But I've I've heard that it is a legitimate like uh, headbutting between him not really listening to some of the things they want to do. And when it comes to the draft, Rick Spielman is huge on what the analytics say on players. And I think some of their late round finds have been, well, we liked what certain numbers said about this guy. And even mentioned Jeff Gladney is somebody who, even with an early pick that everyone would have scouted, they said, you know, we really liked certain numbers about him for how he would project in the NFL. Now that doesn't really matter to Mike Zimmer. Zimmer, give me the players and then I'll, I'll coach him up. Um, and he's going to watch some tape and give his opinions, but that's the front office's job. But when it comes to how you handle game management, I think what we're seeing is a lot of teams push in a certain direction that they're getting an edge off of. And, and that even goes for situational stuff. I mean, right, can you convince Gary Kubiak that the worst play in football is a handoff on second down and 10? I don't know that you can, <laughs> and you know, and, and stuff like that. If it doesn't go right, they could be saying, well, maybe we'll find somebody that sort of matches this up philosophically. And, and think about, here's an example, tying it into the last dance, like Doug Collins. Doug Collins was a good coach, and Michael Jordan loved him, and they won a lot of basketball games with Doug Collins. But the general manager had a different idea for what he wanted offensively, and they made a change. Not because Doug Collins couldn't coach, but because there was just this philosophical disagreement. And if things go wrong with the Vikings down the road, we might see that. And we might see the same front office, but a different coach. Um, I, I'm not saying they're going to fire Zimmer right away. It's just without a contract extension, you wonder, okay, what would be keeping you from a contract extension? And I think you're barking up the right tree with the potential of Zimmer saying, let's just let it play out. And then I'll decide if I'm coming back. Um, and, you know, on the ownership side, 
And on the front office side, they might be saying, hey, you know, I wonder if we had a coach with all these weapons that we've given Kirk Cousins and all this money we've given Kirk Cousins. I wonder if we had a coach that could open it up a little bit more and get us to a top five passing offense. 